So as you know, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, is a tremendous technology that can target specific genes uh, within a single cell. So this clinical trial, uh, actually there are two clinical trials here we need to talk about, CLIMB-111 and CLIMB-121. Uh, the first trial is enrolling patients with transfusion-dependent beta thalassemia. CLIMB-121 is enrolling patients with sickle cell disease uh, who had a minimum of two vaso-occlusive crises per year in the last two years. And the principle of these trials, uh, patients are screened, enrolled, then screened, and after screening is performed, peripheral blood stem cells are collected from patients. For those with sickle cell disease, we use plerexifor only. For those with uh, beta thalassemia, we use a combination of GCSF and plerexifor. The cells then are shipped to a manufacturing facility uh, where they are electroporated, uh, and then a CRISPR-Cas9 with a guide RNA is uh, placed into the cell, specifically targeting the uh, erythroid enhancer of BC11A. So BC11A is actually an interesting gene that was discovered uh, in the last 15 years where it actually can silence or decrease the production of fetal hemoglobin in human cells. So our work here was actually uh, to potentially increase the fetal hemoglobin in the, uh, in the cells, increase the production of fetal hemoglobin. So first, what, uh, what we report on in ASH is um, in the first seven patients we infused uh, with beta thalassemia. And those patients all required one cycle of collection, uh, and the cell dose was infused after using high doses of b over four days. They were pharmacokinetically um, uh, adjusted for myeloablation. Uh, the patients received those cells intravenously. And what we have observed in our results is all seven patients are actually transfusion independent. What the remarkable part is the three patients with the severe beta globin mutation. There are two patients with IBS uh, 110, uh, which is a severe beta globin mutation, uh, both of which have normal hemoglobin at last follow-up. We have one patient with beta zero, beta zero genotype, and that patient uh, is also transfusion independent at three months. Uh, and I can tell you she is my patient and she is, continues to be transfusion independent beyond four months. So these are very exciting results in patients with beta thalassemia. We also observed in those patients that there is a high expression of fetal hemoglobin in all the red blood cells. So more than 99% of the red blood cells actually have fetal hemoglobin in them. And not only it is pancellular, but it's also sustained over a period of time with a follow-up of up to 20 months in one patient, uh, the cells are persisting and the levels of fetal hemoglobin are very high. So this basically is extremely encouraging results and we continue to enroll patients and we are currently enrolling uh, adolescents uh, age 12 to 18 to the study uh, to study it in younger patients. We also study the same technology in patients with sickle cell disease. We report on three patients with SS disease, uh, and those patients had multiple vasoclusive crises prior to enrollment, ranging from four to seven and a half per year. Uh, patients actually collected uh, stem cells. Two patients required two cycles of mobilizations, and one patient required one cycle of mobilization to achieve a target cell dose. Uh, they again received b and myeloablation, followed by infusion of the cells. All patients engrafted, and uh, the results we presented at ASH again show a very high level of fetal hemoglobin expression uh, in the patients, ranging from 31 to 48% uh, in the patients. And this has also been sustained over time. The longest follow-up patient we have is 16 months, and at 16 months, that patient continued to have very high levels of fetal hemoglobin. Those levels of fetal hemoglobin are actually higher than what we observe in patients with hereditary persistent fetal hemoglobin. Now, the elevation in fetal hemoglobin also was, uh, was pancellular. We studied the red blood cells in those patients, uh, and more than 98% of the cells in sickle cell patients express fetal hemoglobin, which is very encouraging, and it's also sustained over time. Uh, the exciting thing here is... Uh, is that that high level fetal hemoglobin has translated into clinical benefit for all three patients. So none of those patients actually have 
uh, experienced any vaso-occlusive crisis after infusion of CTX001. So these preliminary results, both in beta thalassemia as well as sickle cell disease, uh, a, it's a good proof of principle that CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing can work, and uh, it resulted in patients with beta thalassemia being transfusion independent, even those with severe genotype. And what we have seen in sickle cell patients, and they continue to be vaso-occlusive crisis-free uh, with elevation in their fetal hemoglobin and total hemoglobin. Uh, these are extremely exciting data, and uh, we hope with longer follow-up and larger cohort of patients, uh, we can prove that this therapy can offer a functional cure for both patients with beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease.